And hello once again mga champions. Isang magandang tanghali po mga kapwa naming naka-quarantine sa kanilang mga bahay. Welcome to Mental Health Talks, protecting our mental health versus COVID-19. Last week, pinag-usapan natin ang coping with anxiety and uncertainty. Ngayon naman, pag-uusapan natin ang sa episode na ito, ang strengthening the resilience of youth and families. O kung paano nga ba natin mapapatibay ang mga bata, ating mga sarili at ng buong pamilya sa gitna ng krisis na kinakaharap natin dulot ng COVID-19. Nandito na tayo sa second episode ng series na ginawa ng Hashtag Mental Health PH in partnership with the Medical City Department of Psychiatry. Ako po muli si Naiko Bautista ng Mental Health PH at ako ang inyong magiging host para sa hapong ito. Sa programang ito, susubukan natin sagutin ng inyong mga katanungan, kaya pakisulat na lamang ang mga tanong nyo sa comment section sa ilalim ng ating mga screens. If you're on Twitter, gamitin natin ulit ang hashtag na hashtag MHTalks or hashtag MHTALKS na dahil meron tayong mga community moderators na humahanap ng inyong mga questions. At itatanong natin ito mamaya sa ating guest speaker. To start off our program, ipapakilala ko muna ang ating guest for today. Is a young child and adolescent psychiatrist that graduated from the University of the East Ramon Magsaysay Memorial Medical Center in 1994. Nagtapos ng residency in general psychiatry sa Medical City, Pasig noong 2001, then followed by her fellowship in child psychiatry at the Philippine Children's Medical Center in 2004. She has been speaking in various events discussing topics related to addiction, children and teen depression, and suicide. She was also the vice president of the Philippine Psychiatric Association in 2018, then in 2019 became the president of the same organization. Active member din siya ng iba't ibang mga organizations including the Philippine Medical Association, the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, and Group for Addiction Psychiatry of the Philippines. Currently, siya ang Vice President ng Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry. Champion, please welcome our guest, Dr. Vanessa B. Kainghom. Hi, Doc. Magandang hapon po. Good afternoon. Ayan, so, kamusta naman po kayo? Kamusta naman po yung buhay niyo ngayon na naka-self-quarantine tayo or naka-enhanced community quarantine? Oo, oh, eto, nag adjust po ako sa pagiging online kasi mm-hmm. hindi po ako sanay at nare-realize ko mahirap din pala ang buhay ng mga millennials kasi lahat <laughs> online, di ba? Ngayon ako nakaka-experience ng work from home. Yes po. <laughs> Grabe! <laughs> Iba, iba 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 na nga po talaga yung ano natin ngayon yung buhay natin ngayon di ba so we, we are kind of forced to be um updated with our information technology di ba yes, and doc thank you talaga dito sa mga technology kasi nakaka interact pa rin ako with different people yes po di ba connecting people mm-hmm. now let's talk about strengthening resilience ng kabataan at na, ng mga pamilya ngayon no ano po ba yung ibig sabihin natin sa resilience at ano po yung importansya nito during this pandemic ah uh, okay uh, ang definition talaga ng resilience is uh, for me ha it's the ability of a person or a family kasi we're talking about resilience in families Mm-hmm. The ability of the family to get back to their previous functioning or become better after a big uh, trial or crisis like what we are experiencing now, itong COVID-19. And itong COVID-19, uh, it's, it's really being compared to a war, di ba? Para talaga itong war kasi buong mundo ang apektado eh. The whole world is now in crisis, di ba? And this is parang uh, a big stress for everybody and parang it's insurmountable but I am still hopeful that we will all overcome this. Yes, ayan, maraming salamat to. Now, Doc, ano po ba yung ibang factors na nakaka-apekto sa resilience ng isang tao? Okay. Uh, ang, ang, fi, ang tingin ko, hmm. napaka-important talaga ng psychological well-being ng isang tao prior mangyari yung crisis. Hmm. Uh, yung kanyang mga coping mechanisms, how he addresses stress or how he tackles 
crisis or problems before pa nangyari yung present crisis. That's very important. Another important factor is yung kanyang uh, support group, his mm. family, his friends, uh, the way he interacts with other people, important din yun. Before pa mangyari yung crisis and uh, his resources, that's also very important. For example, uh, financial resources, uh, uh, his his house, his uh, food, mga ganon. That's also very important. And yung income, work, etc. So, bali, Doc, talagang isang malaking factor dito yung parang psychological stability ng isang tao, di ba? At saka, kasi di ba, the way you define resilience, it's more of how we bounce back from yes, everything yes. that's gonna happen. Yes. And, and malaking nga pong factor dito is kung gaano ka nga baka ready sa maaaring mangyayari. No, tama ka doon, tama ka. No, Doc, question ko po, meron po bang connection yung ating kultura bilang mga Pinoy, bilang Pilipino, dun sa resilience na nabibuild natin? Meron po bang certain aspects sa ating culture na parang, uy, Pero mas okay na mas kakayanin natin yung ganitong tipo ng problema. Uh, yung, yung unique sa Filipino culture na nakaka-add sa resilience natin is yung bayanihan culture. Mm-hmm. Yung, yung community nagsasama-sama, nagtutulungan, magkakapitbahay. Di ba innate yun sa Pilipino? Mm-hmm. Yung, yung ganon. Naaalala ko nga po before nitong COVID-19 yung Yolanda. Yung yes, mga bahay na matataas, yung mga may second floor, kinukupkup nila yung mga neighbors nila na, na one story lang yung bahay. Kinukupkup mm-hmm. nila kasi malulubog na yun eh. So, nagbabayanihan. That's one Filipino trait, no? Ang pangalawa is yung extended family, di ba? Mm-hmm. Talagang hanggang sa malalayong kamag-anak, we still treat them as family. Yes, so, yung ating support group is malawak. ba? So, pagka yung family mo in distress, pwede-pwede kang kumuha ng support from your tito-tita, mga ninong-ninang. That's, diba? That's important. Yes. yes. <laughs> ninang, lolo-lola, etc. Yun. So talagang ano, napapalawak yung pinaka-support group natin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right, Doc. Now, question, Doc, kasi for um, sa side ng mga, ano, ng mga students, katulad ng topic natin, no, more on the family and the children in it. So, kasi marami tayong mga estudyante ngayon na hindi, syempre, hindi sila nakapasok kasi canceled yung mga classes natin. We only have online classes, but then there are a lot of universities or mga schools na sinuspend din yung online classes. And yung buhay po ng mga estudyante, nakafocus or nakapalibot sa school setting. Mm-hmm. Now, po, paano natin i-approach yung isang um, student or isang estudyante kapag nararamdaman niyang hindi na siya nakaka-function ng ayos? Kasi nga, wala na yung daily activities na nag-going to school. So, mm-hmm. paano po natin siya matutulungan? Okay. Uh, talagang... Uh, panibago itong situation natin na uh, lahat naka-home quarantine, no? yung mga nag-work, mga work from home, at yung mga estudyante na pumapasok sa school, uh, kailangan na mag-adjust to a homeschool program, di po ba? Doon sa mga students na meron na talagang uh, innate study habits, hindi mm-hmm. mahirap yon kasi you are used to a study schedule on your own and you you practice taking breaks, reading, and studying on your own. So, no problem yon. Pero doon po sa mga hindi sanay doon, yung kailangan pumapasok sa school para mm-hmm. ma-regulate yung mga schedules nila, uh, a few recommendations are ito. Ang nire-recommend ko sa mga mothers na mga patients ko na students kailangan talaga sa bahay napaka-important meron kang certain area in the house or kahit table lang na maliit mm-hmm. where you put all your school things di ba all your school things and you study there tapos mm-hmm. pag magbe-break ka you leave them there then di ba oh. so parang meron kang area which you uh, psych yourself up as school mm-hmm. oh okay 
Tapos, it's also recommended to maintain a regular schedule. Like, if you are used to waking up at 7.30 you, a.m., you wake up still at 7.30 a.m. Kahit wala kang pasok, mm-hmm. you still take a bath, eat breakfast, and and recommended ko yung magbihis ka. Mm-hmm. Oo, kasi pag nagbibihis ka, ang feeling mo, pupunta ka na ng school. <laughs> Di ba? Well, is it, it necessary to wear the uniform again? Or basta na lang ma-ready naman yung sarili? <laughs> basta yung bihis lang na pang outdoors. Mm. Kasi kung nakapajama ka, tapos mag, magagawa ka ng schoolwork, parang nakaka-invite talaga yung ah, yes. mama mo na matulog ka. <laughs> Di ba? Yes, Amitin na natin. Talagang nakaka-tempt. So, Mas maganda yung bihis ka, nakaupo. Uh, mm. Hindi siya doon recommended yung nakahiga. Yun. Oh. Tapos, uh, schedule mo na rin yung mga dapat mong matapos okay. for that day or for that hour and mag, mag-frequent breaks ka. When you do breaks, you have to time yourself and mm-hmm. uh, do it away from your study area. Oh, okay, so parang it's more of conditioning yourself. Yes, tama po. And during weekends, you also condition yourself na I won't do school work today because today is Sunday. This will be time for me. Yun. Ayun, so parang you, you still stick to a routine and parang mariritain ma- 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 pa rin natin yung normalcy ng buhay. Yes, na tama. Na Sunday and ang um, weekends, um, talagang it's a time for myself. Pero pag I, Monday to Friday, we uh, grind. Tama po. Hindi Ayan. maganda yung 24-7 din, nag-aaral ka. Mas, ma- mas mare-retain mo ka. <laughs> mas mare-retain mo talaga pag nag-break ka. And mm-hmm. don't forget to get a good number of hours of sleep at night. Uh, Kasi ay isa pa pala, no? Isang yes danger pag nasa bahay ka 24-7, dangerous na mabaliktad ang sleeping habits mo. Mm-hmm. A lot of people will condition their minds to think na I can wake up late tomorrow so I will watch TV until 3 a.m. Kasi I have the luxury of yes. waking up tomorrow. That's not good. Kasi iba pa rin ang tulog ng gabi compared sa araw. Yes. Okay. Okay. Sige. Those are things that we have to take note. Especially sa mga viewers natin na naka-homeschooling ngayon. I believe we have a lot of students who are watching right now. Yes. So yon advice ni Doc ha, we always have to stick with a certain schedule and try to condition ourselves na na doon pa rin tayo sa, meron tayong patutunguhang um, parang goals mm-hmm. for that day. Ayan. Mm-hmm. Sige Doc, ito naman po, um, paano naman po tayo makakatulong sa mga kamag-anak natin na sila naman yung nakaka-experience ng sintomas ng depression or uh-huh. parang pagkapalisa, ganun po. Okay, okay. Uh, depende yan no, kung sino yung kamag-anak. For example, mm-hmm. if mga anak natin, mga kabataan na na-anxious or nag-worry about sa COVID-19 kasi mm-hmm. this is the uh, situation where a lot of people talaga all over the world are stressed. Okay. Yes. Pagka young pa yung bata, like uh, preschool age, sabihin na natin, mga 6 years old, 5 years old, uh, pag nanay ka kasi na ganun ka bata, natural tendency mo is ayaw mo na makita na yung anak mo nag-worry, di ba? Mm-hmm. Yes, ayaw natin na matakot sila, parang... Napaka-easy yung, yung path na sasabihin natin. Wala yun, huwag kang mag-alala kasi ayaw natin nga siya mag-worry. Mm-hmm. Pero yung kabataan kasi, eh talagang mararamdaman nila yon yung worry. So it's important na i-validate mo yung worries nila. It's, it's very important to tell them na what are you feeling if the child says na I feel worried I've, I'm scared of the situation, what will happen to me, you validate their feelings and answer them truthfully in terms that they will understand, depending mm-hmm. on how old the child is. Yun. Oh. Okay, do. Bali, yung pinaka-point po din natin dito is hindi lang natin siya, basta pababayaan or we just shrug it off. Ah, yes, believe, yes. There are a lot of parents din kasi na they also experience worries and naka, na, um, parang ayaw nila i-entertain yung worry ng ibang tao. So their, their tendency is just to 
hindi okay lang yan. Pabayan lang muna natin. Uh-huh. Okay. So, yes. ang yes. pinaka-point po talaga is to um, acknowledge or... Yes, validate. acknowledge mo. And then, tell them what you know. For example, uh, tell them that yung, yung usual knowledge about COVID-19, how it mm-hmm. is transmitted, uh, what the government is doing, what our frontliners are doing to help solve this crisis. Pero napaka-important din na you will still, uh, you will instill hope sa kabataan. Like, you will tell them you're confident that we will get over this, although mm-hmm. you know na talaga mahirap na may ma-experience na difficulties yung family. Yes, po. Okay. And another thing pala, yung anxiety sa mga kamag-anak natin, lalo na sa kabataan, they are more intense pag hindi nila alam ang mangyayari sa kanila mm-hmm. or hindi nila alam ang gagawin. So important na you reiterate to them things that they can do. For example, mm-hmm. you have to keep uh, repeating the hygiene techniques like hand washing. You can even teach them the proper hand washing. Oh. Ba, yung 20 seconds, dalawang happy birthday. Happy birthday. Mo, and whole hand, wash mo, hindi lang palms, ganon. Oo. And wearing of a mask. It's now recommended yata na when, everybody, wears uh, everybody should wear a mask. Okay. Ayan. Okay, so, social distancing. Ay, yes, po. And ito pa, ito pa, emphasize to them that staying at home, by staying at home, you are already doing something. That's true, Doc. Ayan, kasi syempre yung mga bata, ay, gusto ko po lumabas, gusto ko magalagala kasi wala namang school, di ba? Oo, oh, oh, oh. sabihin mo na it really uh, sacrifice that they should do and everybody should do. Okay. okay. And Doc, speaking of difficulties, um, sa alam po natin na sa mga pamilya natin, hindi maiiwasan na meron tayong mga conflicts, tama? Mm-hmm. And nasabi rin po natin kanina na one um, effect of our culture as Filipinos is malaki yung support system. Kasi mm-hmm. we have our extended families. Now, paano naman po kung meron pong conflict sa family? And mm-hmm. syempre, kasi we are forced to be, co- to be under one roof. Ngayon, hindi po katulad ng dati na maaring ma-advise natin is you have to physically distance yourself from your family to avoid conflicts. Eh ngayon, talagang dito lamang tayo sa loob ng iisang bahay or iisang bukong. So what do we do to um to, to, to cope up with that situation? Oo, napakagalat po talaga ng question niyo, sir. Kasi uh, ang usual na advice namin sa ganitong situation is you try to avoid the person para hindi magka conflict ng conflict or magkaroon ng confrontation, mm-hmm. di ba? Oo. Pero ngayon, paano nga? Dahil nasa isang bahay mm-hmm. lang kayo. Naku, mahirap yun. Lalo na yung mga nakatira sa condo. Yes. Maliliit. Yung Every maliit na yung space. Oo, naku, mahirap talaga yun. Uh, ang mga naisip ko lang to deal with this situation is ganito. Uh, hindi naman kailangan na mag-ayos kayo ng tao. Or, kasi there are issues and conflicts na long playing eh. Parang malalalim ang ugat. Or talagang it's difficult to resolve the conflict. And resolving them because there's a crisis is next to impossible, di ba? Lalo mag, mag, magka-clash, di ba? Yes. So ang naisip ko dyan is a person whom the two people with a conflict respects the other person, but for the sake of the family, you have to postpone the resolution of this issue. Mm-hmm. And you can, kung mga bata, sabihin mo, you can put it in a box and go back to it pag na-resolve na yung mm-hmm. di ba? But right now, this is what we have to do. You have to work with the person that you don't mm-hmm. like. But I have informed the other person that he will do the same. You can go back to your issue pag natapos na itong COVID-19, di ba? Yes. Oo. Kung ayaw mo makipag-usap, you don't have to say anything. 
Pero be, be careful about what you say, what you express. Mm-hmm. Yung mga, yung mga ano, mahilig tayong mga Pilipino sa mga pahaging, mga ah, yes. ganito, di ba? You avoid it talaga consciously kasi da, dyan nag-uumpisa yung mga away, di ba? Oh, <laughs> okay. So parang mga patutsada and all Ay, oo, oh, tama, ayun. Patutsada. <laughs> parang, ay, yan kasi. Yung parang nasa loob lang kayo ng small oh, space oh. tapos may mga sinasabi. Mm-hmm. No, Doc, paano kung ano, kung nandun na mismo tayo sa part na hindi na nila na-control? Na Like, mm-hmm. hindi na sila nakapag... Um, tag- hindi lang napigilan yung patutsada nila. Tapos, natuloy na nga into a confrontation. Now, what are we supposed to do? Uh, maganda is mag-time out pa rin. Okay. Uh, they can go to separate rooms. Or okay. uh, kung, kung studio yung apartment, to the bathroom, to the restroom, yung isa, mm-hmm. sa sala, or to the clubhouse ng condo, or... Mm-hmm to the lobby and magpalamig muna doon. And then, uh, remind them na you are in crisis and mm-hmm. uh, it will help the family a lot if uh, so, if you will uh, cooperate with yes. everybody. Yun. Okay, so talagang you really have to remind, we have to prioritize na yes, right no, now, no. we are not invalidating what you're feeling But hmm. then we have to focus on what's really happening right now. Yes. Na we have this pandemic, kailangan natin itong harapin. Kasi ngayon na pandemic, it's very important that the family functions as one. Yes. Sa buo kayo. Kasi ganito yun, no? For example, yung family nyo, walang may COVID or walang PUI. So healthy kayo lahat. Tapos may isang member na hindi magko-cooperate, tatakas, makikipagkita sa girlfriend. Eh, yung girlfriend, may mother na positive, PUI. So, mahahawa yung tumakas. Pagbalik sa bahay, makukontaminate Ma- yung whole family. So, mas lalala ang crisis, ba diba? So, kailangan talaga whole family isi-seminar ng Uh, authority figure like you, yung mother, ang authority, or father, or both parents, isi-seminar nyo lahat. Hindi lang mga anak, pati katulong, yaya, mm-hmm. driver, lahat na, nakat- na nakatira sa bahay, isi-seminar nyo on proper hand washing, wearing of mask, social distancing. Yan. Yes. So, dapat buo. Okay. Yan. Reminder na talaga, we have to function as a unit, di ba? Yes. As one family. Napaka-important okay. na ngayon. Tuhan mo, sakit. And meron po kasing mga posts on social media, especially for those people who have their family members, na um, yumao because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. So how, paano po kasi for, ano, for mature um, individuals, they already understand the concept of mortality. Mm-mm or yung pagkawala ng isang minamahal sa buhay. Mm. Paano po natin naman ito ipepresent sa isang um, bata? Kasi syempre, hindi rin naman po nila inaasahan na ito ay mangyayari. Yes, okay. Uh, itong situation natin ngayon, no, is really unique. Kasi, uh, expect na natin that a number of families will face situations na may mamamatay Mm-hmm. And hindi mo siya makakausap. Hindi, kasi yung usual uh, nangyayari is when a person or relative dies, the whole family gathers around. Yes. Uh, the family will hold a wake and mm-hmm. a funeral, di ba? And uh, the whole uh, clan, families, and friends are invited to say their last goodbyes. But during this time, We can't do that. Yes, but uh, because uh, we want to avoid spread of the disease. So in most cases, the person will be cremated, cremated. Yes. and then the ashes just sent to you. And up to that point, walang family na kasama yung namatay, and this will incur a lot of guilt feelings. Yes, uh, family sa mga na nabubuhay, di ba? So, ang um, naisip ko na lang na strategies for that is use 
uh, social media, di ba? Mas maganda. Make the process visual. Uh-huh. Uh, pag may sakit yung kamag-anak nasa hospital, use social media or record videos of families, activities, or uh, words of encouragement para makarating sa taong may sakit. Or uh, pagka talagang nawala na, uh, you can hold virtual weeks. Di ba may ganun? Yes, po. Uh, yung ibulol. Yes, oo yun. Ganun. Uh, pwede rin kayong mag... Uh, sa virtual weeks, magsabi ng mga last words na pwede mm-hmm. sabihin dun sa yumao or ganun. Para naman po sa mga kabataan, uh, it's not recommended na sabihin yun na nag-abroad or mm-hmm. uh, pumunta sa ibang bansa. Usually, may mga families na ganun eh, mm-hmm. na yes, nasabi, umalis lang, ganun. Actually, mas maganda na you tell the child na nawala, namatay yung uh, kapatid mo, uncle mm-hmm. mo, masakit talaga kung parent. It's much better to tell them. So, mas maganda to tell them the truth and to tell them simply. Simply lang. Ay, but what important is you have to make them realize na kahit nawala yung isang member ng family, life still goes on. Ayun. Okay, so basically, you have to give it directly to the person or you have to present it as simple as possible. But then you always have to remind that your life still goes on. Mm-hmm. Hindi nagtatapos dun lamang sa situation life. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ayan. Sige, bago po tayo magpatuloy, para lamang po sa ating mga viewers na maaari po kayo magsulat ng inyong mga questions sa ating comment section sa ilalim ng inyong screens. At tatanong po natin yan mamaya kay Doktora. Now, sa Twitter naman, maaaring gamitin ng hashtag na hashtag MHTalks or hashtag MHTALKS para makita ng ating mga community moderators. Ngayon, balik tayo. Now, Doktora, question po, paano po tayo makakapag um, tagito, paano natin mapapa, ma-raise ang ating mga children with resilience amidst this, pan- this pandemic? Like, paano po natin yung mabibuild sa mga bata? Kasi nandito na tayo mismo eh sa uh, nangyayari and wala na po tayo dun sa part na stable na psychologically stable tayo or para more of the prevention part. Okay. Uh, one thing, no, as I mentioned earlier, um, teach the children na the family has to function as one. Pero, uh, like in business companies, each person has a role in the family. Okay? So, emphasize the kids na this is what you do, this is what mom is doing, this is what dad is responsible for, but you you are also responsible for some things. Mm-hmm. In short, bigyan ng responsibilities yung mga anak. Diba? Mm-hmm. Kasi, uh, ako talaga, kasama sa prescription ko, ang uh, household chores. Mm-hmm. Kailangan bigyan ng household chores ang kabataan. Pero, age appropriate naman. Yes. Oo. Hindi kagaya nung time na lumalaki ako na napaka inappropriate ng mga inuutos ng panahin yes. grabe pero <laughs> pero nirerecommend ko pa rin na paggawin ng household chores yung mm-hmm. kabataan like for example pag 6 years old pwede mo na utusan yan mag-set ng table mag-wall oh. ayusin yung mga gamit magdilig ng halaman and you should uh, monitor na ginagawa talaga every day and okay. you have to emphasize na now is the time na kailangan mong gawin yan every day kasi you have a lot of time at home. Diba? Tapos, uh, another thing is teach your child problem-solving skills. Okay, problem-solving kasi hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na wala yan, uh, hindi ka magkakaroon ng COVID-19, walang magkakaroon ng COVID-19. Although it's a good or an easy way to deal with our anxiety, eh, di ba? Yes. Mas maganda to teach them to prepare. Okay? So, mm-hmm. meron na silang 
a notion of what to do in case magkaroon ng ganito. For example, in case magkasakit si mommy or si daddy, ang gagawin mo, uh, somebody will take over the responsibilities of that person. Okay, for example, nagkasakit si mommy, the oldest sibling has to watch over the younger ones. Oh, okay. Ayun. Or you have to teach them to adjust. For example, if, if si mami nagkasakit, you have to get used to take out food kasi walang magluluto. Diba? Pero mm-hmm. i-take out yung healthy, hindi naman yung... Uh, po. Yes po. <laughs> okay, ganon. And always instill hope, pero yung realistic. Okay. Okay, okay so bali, ang, ang pinaka-point po natin doon is you have to... um. Establish responsibilities for yes. everyone. Tapos, yes. alam din ng bata, parang we reorient the kid na, okay, ito yung functions ni mommy, pero pag ako yung nagkaroon ng sakit, maaring ganito pupunta yung functions ko. Yes. Kanina sa mapapapunta. Okay, so at least oriented. Okay, that's really nice, Doctora. I'm really learning right now. Okay, so, now, Doctora, question po. Meron po bang long-term effects itong pandemic na to sa mental health ng kabataan? And ano po yung maaari natin gawin? If ever it's a good effect, then how can we reinforce it in the future? Or kung bad effect naman po ito, how can we prevent it from happening here? Ay, definitely po talaga may long-term effect ito. Uh, na, naalala ko nga yung sabi ng isang supervisor ko nung student pa ako, pero although it's a cliche, sabi niya, anything which do not kill you will make you stronger. Yes. Pero talagang totoo yun eh. So ito, tsaka na-realize ko rin yun sa, ngayon dahil matanda na ako, mm-hmm. na-realize ko rin yun na... <laughs> Parang hindi naman matanda, do? <laughs> oh, uh, I thank you. <laughs> na-realize ko yun na the bigger the crisis that you are facing, the bigger is your opportunity to do something worthwhile or the bigger your chances of becoming a hero. Diba? Mm-hmm. Yung mga nag ambition maging hero. Kasi pag na-overcome mo yun, ang laki-laking achievement yun for you. Uh, so, ang outcome dito is ang long-term effect, hopefully, pag na-overcome mo, is you will become a stronger person and you will be better able to cope with uh, situations like this in the future. Pero ang long-term psychiatric effects din sa kabataan is napaka-possible yung mga post-traumatic stress disorder, yung mga... Uh, anxieties, worries, depression. We can help prevent this by the tips I mentioned earlier, by mm-hmm. uh, promoting resilience, uh, problem-solving skills, coping mechanisms, etc. Mm, okay. Now, Doc, ano po yung advice nyo on how to support a family member who is a frontliner. Now, kasi we, we have emphasized that we have to um, focus as one family unit and we have to stay indoors to prevent things from happening. Now, paano kung hindi po natin maiwasan kasi frontliner mismo yung isang family member natin? So, how can we support those people? Oh, naku, mahirap talaga yan, no? Nagbabasa nga ako ng mga references kanina. Napakahirap talaga pag frontliner ang isang member of the family, lalo na kung parent ito. Mm-hmm. Pero we are all lucky right now because of technology. We can do social media like what we're doing right now. Or uh, kasi remember po yung frontliners, they have duty hours, di ba? Yes. Ang duties usually is 6 a.m. to 2 p.m., 2 p.m. to 10 p.m., tapos 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. So, yung mga breaks nila is hindi tumutugma sa breaks natin, di ba? For example, magla-lunch tayo, sila nagtatrabaho pa rin dahil magla-lunch sila 2 p.m. na. Yes, diba? So, ang isang option natin is to videotape our activity mm-hmm. for them to watch later. Okay. Or yung frontliner can videotape his good night and the parent at home can play it pagpatulog na yung bata. 
But of course, so, kung kaya mag-live, pwede rin naman. Ah, uh, okay. So parang more of magkakaroon din tayo ng parang video call between yes, yes. the frontliner and you. And, and okay. mas maganda kung yung video call interactive. Mm. Okay. For example, pag mag action yung frontliner na ikikiss niya yung anak niya, yung parent na kasama ng bata, ikikiss yung bata para ah. para ma-feel niya yung physical presence ng frontliner oh. and vice versa. Okay, that's really nice. Parang ma-establish natin yung communication talaga between those two people. And yes. hindi lamang sa basta parang nasa screen lamang, di ba? Yes, tama, tama. Ayan. Sige, Doc, ngayon meron po tayo mga questions from social media. Galing po sa ating Facebook Live at sa um, Twitter. Now, let's start with one question. This one's from Maine. Man- Wait, this is from Miss Maine Manalasan. Manalansan from Facebook. Now, the question is, how can younger members of the family help the elders cope with the pandemic and vice versa? Now, this comes from, um, para meron po kasi generation gap between the two um, groups. So, paano po naman yung mga bata yung makakatulong dun sa mga mas nakakatulong? Ah, okay, ito, pumasok lang sa mind ko ngayon, no? Young people, especially teenagers and young adults, Even for middle school age children, you are all very adept with technology. So you can help your elder members of the family like your lolo lola, tito tita yes. na medyo mga senior na, you can help them with technology. For example, teach them uh, how to manipulate a smartphone or a laptop or an iPad so that they can establish contact with Uh, their friends, other people that they need to talk to. Di ba maganda yon? Kasi mm-hmm. mga senior na, they, some are not very adept with technology. Okay? Mm-hmm. Another thing, another way that young people can help is contributing to the family and the home. Like, helping with household chores, helping with the cooking, etc. Mm-hmm. So parang, yes, I do the cooking and yes, I do the cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> Kung ano yung mga uso din ngayon. So parang we try to um, parang turuan din natin yung ating mga elders kung paano mag-cope up sa nangyayari ngayon. So parang through technology and uh, ayan. Okay, sige. Doktor, ito naman po. This comes, from, this comes from Twitter. This is from Mika. Um, her Twitter handle is at Think Dominic. So the question is, What is your recommendation on parents limiting school-age children with social media use or access to the constant stream of news from their devices? I think we ha- we discussed part of this before sa episode 1 natin na kasi it's kind of um, draining for mm-hmm. people when they see um, news from the media. Mm-hmm. Pero paano naman po yung ano yung sa mga bata? Kasi sila yung mas marunong talaga magagamit-gamit Ay, ng oh, ano, oh, cell phones. Mm, totoo yun. Actually, uh, Ngayon, nasa house yung kabataan, they have more time to be on their mm-hmm. gadgets. Same pa rin ang recommendation. Uh, Napaka-imposible naman na no zero gadgets. That's an impossibility talaga. You still mm-hmm. allow them to use gadgets. Maybe you can be more lenient and give them more time. Kung dati po, one hour lang ang screen time, maybe you can add another hour. Pero mm-hmm. it's still... it should still not be unlimited use. It's mm. not recommended na, unli, na ang gadget use ng kabataan. Tapos, you can also assign a certain time to read news about the crisis. And mm. mas maganda kung you read it together para you can explain to your child any news. Kasi marami ng fake news ngayon ni, eh, di ba? Yes. Maraming fake news and mga news na nakakataranta talaga. So you can explain to them and you can tell them, wait, don't believe everything you read. Let's verify muna. Uh, uh, okay. And choose also news which are positive. Like for example, if sinabi na ganito ang death toll, ganyan-ganyan, you can also say, wait, there is no news na may Ito. gap naman. Di ba? Yes. Ayan. Ayan, so parang more of instilling hope then. And yes. actually, Doc, maganda nga po yung idea na when you look at news, you do it together. Yes, you yes. can fact check together. Okay, that's really nice kasi matuturoan din natin yung bata kung paano nga ba yung dapat gawin. Okay. Now, Doc, ito po, one question from um, 
Cecile Fulgencio and Presi Mendoza from Facebook. Now, kasi we believe na there are statistics din na nag-show na tumataas po yung um, domestic violence in um, the countries that are affected by um, the pandemic. Now, ito po, ito po yung specific question po nila mismo. So, all sorts of abuse is also happening at home, especially this time. Now, how can we address it? So, aside from the conflict that we discussed earlier, paano man po kung abuse na yung nangyayari sa loob ng, pa- ng bahay, ano po yung dapat natin gawin? Okay. Uh, Unang-una, no, palagay ko kaya the, the domestic violence and abuse is also increasing okay. is because a lot of adult people are experiencing heightened stress. Remember, yeah. when the person is very stressed, it heightens bad emotions inside. For example, anger, anxiety, which can um, manifest as violence. So y- you address it. Before it becomes a violence, you address first the depression, anxiety, and stress. Okay. Pero if talaga pong uh, nagwawala na, nananakit, we don't have a choice but to ask outside help from the barangay, uh, from the police, pag mm-hmm. talaga hindi mo na ma- makakontrol. Yes. Nakakatakot yun kesa naman may masaktan mm-hmm. or may um, uh, makapanakit na yung tao, that's really dangerous. But prevention is still better than cure, di ba? Uh, yes, po. So before yun, i-address mo na ang any anxiety, depression, stress ng tao. Um, simplest option is talking to the person, finding out his what he is feeling or what mm-hmm. his worries are, and just listening to the person. Kasi when he when the stressed person knows that somebody is listening to him and he pours out his worries and thoughts nakaka mm-hmm. uh, okay. yes. okay now doc ito po more of point of views po yung tinitingnan natin dito this one's a question from Kennard Felix from mm-hmm. Facebook now the question is what do you recommend to do for the siblings of the patient who has anxiety or depression Especially during this COVID-19 pandemic. Kunwari, meron pong uh, magkakapatid, madami sila. Tapos yung isa lamang po yung nakaka-experience ng anxiety. Now, how do we address those other um, siblings of that person? So, ano yung maaari nating sabihin sa kanila? Uh, doon sa kapatid na walang anxiety? Mm-hmm. Yes po. Ah, okay. Ang, ang recommendation ko pa rin dyan is, uh, mas maganda if you tell in simple terms the the other siblings, for example, tatlong magkakapatid, yung bunso, mm-hmm. may anxiety and depression. Mas maganda pa rin if you tell the, the older two about what the younger one is feeling or uh, what he is experiencing inside. Kasi remember mm-hmm. po ang emotions, hindi natin physically nakikita yan, di ba? So, yung, although yung dalawang matandang kapatid, I am sure, they are sensing that something is not right with the younger one. Diba? Mm-hmm. Yes po. Much better if you clarify this with the other two para mm-hmm. maintindihan nila yung situation. And you can even elicit their help to support the sibling mm-hmm. with anxiety and depression. They can engage the sibling who has anxiety and depression in activities para ma-release yun. Ayan, maraming maraming salamat, Doktor. That was a very informative discussion. Now ngayon, muli po namin binibigay pugay ang, sa ating mga frontliners, sa mga ospital, mga police at militar, mga community health volunteers, mga nagtatrabaho sa butika, grocery at mga palengke, lalong-lalo na rin sa ating mga LGUs at barangay workers. Kaway-kaway din po sa mga nanonood across the Philippines and I believe we have viewers not only in the Philippines but we have viewers from other countries as well. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong pagtangkilik. Isang malakas na shoutout din sa ating hashtag mental health PH team. Maraming maraming salamat sa inyo sa pagbuo ng pro- programang ito. Also a big shout out to our um, the Medical City residents from the Department of Psychiatry. Maraming maraming salamat din po. Also to one of our partners and major supporters, Ms. Christine and Sir Julius Babo. I believe you're watching us right now. Ngayon para sa mga nagtatanong kung saan sila makakakuha ng counseling, o psychotherapy kung kailangan, o baka kay, may kilala kayong nangangailangan ng professional help, 
Nasa screen nyo po ngayon ang mga pwede nyong tawagan. We have the numbers of NCMH and the Medical City Department of Psychiatry. So, ilalagay din natin ito sa hashtag Mental Health PH Facebook page. Now, Doktora, meron po ba kayong mga last words para sa ating mga viewers? And meron po ba kayong gustong pasalamatan? Ah, okay, sa mga viewers, I know that this is a very trying time. Mm-hmm. But I hope that uh, we all view this as something which we can still get over with and get over stronger. Yes. And pwede akong magpasalamat sa mga kakilala ko. Yes, no. Thank you to the frontliners of the medical city, especially the residents and fellows of the Department of Psychiatry, and also the Philippine Psychiatric Association, the Philippine Society for Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, also the frontliners of all hospitals, especially St. Luke's Medical Center. I'm also supporting the frontliners there and also at Makati Medical Center, Asian Hospital, National Center for Mental Health. Uh, okay. Para po sa mga nakalimutan ko, I hope you understand. <laughs> and Ayan. last, last wow. sa grupo ko po, sa GGS. Hello! Yes! Ayan, maraming maraming salamat po, Dr. Raking Hug. Sobrang marami po kaming natutunan ngayong hapong ito. It was really an informative talk and talagang na- napuntirya natin yung mga questions, no? Nabigyan natin ng linaw ang iba't ibang issues ngayong COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you din for inviting me. Thank you so much. Yes, ayan, maraming salamat. At Um, reminder lamang sa ating mga viewers, we also have a donation drive para po sa ating National Center for Mental Health. So don't forget to donate and support our frontliners there sa ating mga hospitals. Ma- uh, dito na po nagtatapos ang ating ikalawang episode ng MH Talks, Protecting Our Mental Health versus COVID-19, produced by Hashtag Mental Health PH in partnership with the Medical City Department of Psychiatry. Muli ako po si Nico Bautista and thank you for joining us. Iniimbita namin kayo sa susunod na episode sa darating na Miyerkules, April 8, same time, alas 12 ng tanghali. Pag-uusapan naman natin ng ensuring mental well-being during physical illness. O kung papaano naman natin mapapanatili ang mabuting pag-iisip kung ikaw naman ang nakakaranas ng sakit. See you mga champions, stay safe and let us recover together. Thank you! 